<laughs> Take two. All right. Yeah, what, Sami? Guess where we are. Uh, I'm sitting in a chair in a banquet hall at a hotel in Toronto, and I see a bunch of X-Wing players in front of me. Finally. What does that mean? Is the that a store system championship? Open series has a, come a back. A system open. <gasps> to Toronto. Oh. Come yes, back. Yes, we are very well. Finally, it's here where we needed to have one. Our first ever Canadian and first ever Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the words of Dwayne Johnson. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for catching on to that. I appreciate it. All right. That. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm Victor and I'm here with the one and only Samit. AKA Can't Win on VTTV Live. Yeah, VTTV Live at a system open, finally. We've got, uh, we've got a lot of X-Wing action for you today. This is going to be the first system open after the points change Absolutely. on January 29th. And, uh, I mean, you've been doing a little bit of studying on the state of the meta before and after. First of all, right away, thank you so much for being here. We love you guys and girls. Thank you so much. It's very, very interesting. There's been a lot of uh, amazing chatter on the interwebs with all the various different podcasts and stuff like that, talking about how, you know, as we are the first post-change SOS, a lot of, well, people are feeling like a lot of meta-defining is going to come from this event. I'm, I mean, I don't know if it's an uh, unpopular opinion. I'm not so sure. I think one event is not enough to define a meta. Um, I think what I thought was going to happen when the points adjustment is what I'm seeing in my brief sh uh, looking out yeah, on the floor. Yeah, and, and I think we should get into that too. Okay. But I definitely, you know, the, the really cool thing about having having a big competitive event so soon after a points change is that, you know, it's the Wild West. Everyone yes. has an idea of what they yes. think the the uh, the meta is going to look like. I mean, our friend Dion, uh, Gold Squadron podcast, did a Toronto System Open Primer yeah. a couple of days ago saying, yeah. you know, well, these were the lists that were popular uh, prior to the points change, and this is how we may see them evolve going into this thing. Yes. Uh, you know, Samit, that there was a huge boogeyman looming over the state of X-Wing in the form of the Triple Epsilon list. And yeah. you've done a little bit of scouting uh, yeah. before the, the start of this event. And you said you didn't see any. No, so I just walked to the floor. And I mean, first of all, from what I've been able to do my, my rudimentary looking, just through looking through the squad builder, the check-in system that we have on the mobile thing, the, the battle, whatever that one is, the one that's on the phone, the check-in system. Oh, the West Best Coast Paris. There it is. Yeah, so just scrolling through that, if you look really quickly, so far all I've seen is only seven first order. And the first order I'm seeing on the floor, there's nobody who's rocking it yet. Now, not everybody pulls up their list at these events right away. They might be hiding that. But, yeah, I think, I think what happened in Toronto, I don't know if it's just Toronto or it's just whatever happens at, at the border kind of system opens. The Boogeyman list, everybody talks so much about it. We tech against it so much. We prep against it mentally that everybody who was thinking they would run it would be like, ooh, I can't run it. Everyone's ready for it. And then all of us who are like, well, I'm just going to take my list, and if I lose against it, whatever, are happy to not see it. I don't know. Or maybe we will see some, but I don't think there's anything out there. The Phoenix system open that happened, the last system so open before the points This is the last the one before change. the points adjustment, right? Right. And so you were telling me, Samit, I yeah. mean, look at the numbers. Yeah. Imperial, seven, 71 players yeah. out of, I think it was a 215 players And I would almost willing to bet. I mean, I, did, I didn't watch the open, so I don't have the statistics, but I'm willing to right. bet you at least 50% of those lists have a phantom in them. Yeah, I'd right. Be, I and would go so far as probably say 75% had a Phantom Phantoms, or a Punisher. Phantoms, tie bombers, right? Well, not necessarily. No. I almost guarantee you predominantly that would have been a Phantom or a, or a Punisher. It would be Whisper with Vader or it would be Redline. Yeah. Because that, that was the pre-points adjustment. They were right. just so incredibly powerful for their points, uh, their loadouts that they had at the time. Scum was really, really strong back then as well. It's still strong, strong now, but what well, I'm trying to I say mean, is a different type of Scum. That was a lot of Boba. That was a lot of um, Gurries, a lot yeah. of Fens. Well, Moldy Crow too. I mean, that yes. Moldy Crow title. Oh, Palo would have been everywhere. Scum, Scum, man. I like. I play Scum a lot. Yeah. In uh, in X Wing, and it got hit by the nerf bat hard. Yeah, they really did. It's, uh, we were they were talking about uh, some other people were talking about that like, Scum is one of the only factions that lost a lot but didn't get anything in the points adjustment. Now, does that mean that they didn't? I think they did because today's for my looking around on the floor, there is a decent amount of Scum out there. Um, and predominantly, every scum list has one of two ships. Well, one of three ships. The Skurg, uh, a TIE fighter, the Mining Guild TIE, yeah. or the Y-Wing. I mean, they're all ships that have gone big, down in that's price That's the big sea change in scum, right? Like you said before, it was Boba Fett, Guri, Fen Rao, Pelob, a bunch of scum, well, aces, I guess, or, yeah. or at least named pilots. And now it's with the, with the changes to uh, Skurgs now getting the, the gunner upgrade. Yeah. And veteran turret gunner itself dropping from eight points to six points. Yeah. It's opened up. I mean, you'll see it in Rebel too. You'll yeah. see the the five Y wing list with Rebel. But I mean, you got Drea, 
Drea with Zorm Spurt. is so bold. Yeah, Drea, I think, is going to you know, emerge, I think, as, as one of the breakout uh, uh, archetypes. Now, it, it hasn't completely changed, right? I think one, still one of the scary lists uh, from the old points uh, meta was the, the four phantoms. Yep. And a lot of people are just simply dropping Juke from one phantom. Yep. And just playing the list as is, and yep. it's still a contender. Oh, it's beyond still a contender. It's literally the exact same list it used to be. It's like, I mean, somebody who's good at math wing will tell me exactly how much percentile less it went down in effectiveness, but losing one juke is not all that detrimental. Then use that one as a blocker if you need to. Like, yeah. It's still an insanely good list. It's still an insanely efficient list, and we are still seeing a few of them out there on the floor. And you're, you're saying that, uh, again, you said there weren't, any triple epsilons that you saw? That I've seen. That's not now, necessarily saying they're not out do there. Do you think that this m perhaps because, I mean, who knows, right? Like, it, it's possible that we'll have someone today that you didn't see yep. bring that list. But do you think it's possible that it's a case of, like, uh, this boogeyman that's kind of been created out of whole cloth? Everyone kind of was afraid that this is going to be the thing that's going to dominate everything. They overteched against it, overplayed against it. Maybe that scared off a lot of people from bringing it today. Yeah, perhaps. see, it's an interesting point because it's like an amalgamation of a lot of things. Like in 1.0, there were a lot of boogeyman lists that we all teched against, but people still brought them anyways. Like triple jumps, we we all played against them, but we also had tech against them. Like those of us who didn't want to fly them, we're all flying Karnor, Sunter, and, and Inquisitor, or, or a variation of that kind of a thing. So we would, but you'd still see that list because it was just so bloody good. Yeah. Um, later on, like with Rao boats, or later on with like with this, even the stuff that I was flying near the end of 1.0, like the Joustro. Like you could tech against it, you could beat it, but it would still be a good list. Um, I think there is a bit of that factor that people are saying, oh, if I was going to bring triple ups, I, I, all the chatter out there on the web is like all the competitive players have been either mind gaming against it, or practicing it, or teching against it. Or, and then there's also going to be a bunch of players who are going to be like, well, like, I know me, whenever I was coming to these events, I would never bring a list to counter what the biggest list was going to be. I was just going to bring the list that I was passionate about flying. And if I came across a bad matchup, well, then I lose, whatever. But that's not everyone's like that. Um, so there is a bit of that, that people were probably thinking, oh, everyone's ready for it, so I can't bring it. But then there's also the fact is that maybe people just, like, have tried it out and has been like, yeah, but this isn't fun to play. Like, the whole ethos and thought process behind... Um, 2.0 was to get away from that kind of list building and don't knock anybody who does it like you do you no one gets to tell you the right way to play your games like you deserve to fly anything you want but I'm saying is that like I feel like 2.0 is a chance for us to bring like five six chip lists and unique combos and stuff that we've never seen before that we couldn't get back near the end of 1.0 so uh, do you recognize some of the names here on this uh, the standings chart here absolutely I mean we got one here Bruno Bruno is the host of the uh, Millennium Alpha, what, what is it? Millennium Condor yeah. uh, podcast, which is a French language, primary French language X Wing podcast. Yeah. Ballo Diffusion. Thank oh, you. Oh, I would never Mr. dare. Mr. Ottawa. I haven't spoken. I'm not going to. I don't want to insult. <laughs> well, we got the we last got the thing I would ever want to do is kind of bilingual. The yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens when you do. Ah, there's some names on there. We might have heard some of these names before. Oh, we don't got to mention. Who is that? I've never heard of that. I don't know. Before. I mean, there's that? another D letter name on there that Dion Morales uh, we want to talk about. Dion and Dion. <laughs> shout, shout out to GSPN to the Minox. Uh, thank you for coming all the way up from America to come visit uh, the other best land of the free, Canada. Uh, we love you all. Thank you for making the trips up. All the Americans that are out here. There's some Radical Squad boys up here. There's a lot of people from the south of the border, uh, brothers and sisters from down there. You're amazing for taking the time to come up and visit us in our wonderful winter weather to come play with us. We love you. But, yeah, there's a, there's a great mix of wonderful people here. There's a great list of interesting lists here. Uh, Rebels are being played a lot. They're playing... A lot of X-Wings are on the table. This game is called X-Wing. I don't know if that's a bad thing. It's oh, pretty I mean, that's, freaking that's cool. That's definitely a deliberate choice on the I mean, part it's, of it's, FFG. It's also really nice to see that, you know, Reb, Reb and Empire being relatively balanced is kind of thematically feeling right to me. We got a decent uh, smattering of scum. And then, you know, new Disney canon should just stay where it is, off the side where <laughs> nobody likes. Okay. <laughs> Although I love the Resistance ships. They look beautiful. Yeah. I well That RZ-2 I mean, I, is freaking gorgeous. What a good model. Well, it's, a, it's an A-Wing that can, can actually move its guns. Like to the, the regular rz one yeah. supposed to be able to do, but we won't remember. We won't comment on that. I think that's one of my favorite aspects of 2.0 uh, is the five-faction split. Do you, do you think a lot of this uh, this somewhat over-representation of Rebel and Galactic, in addition to the points changes that we talked about, 
just simply having a bigger pool oh, of ships absolutely. to choose from. It's absolutely ship pool because yeah. there's so much more to do. There's an entire there's an entire five plus years worth of ships for Rebs and Empire and even Scum to pull from. I mean, Scum caught up really quick. Like I got into the game just bef just after the first uh, Most Wanted dropped. So just before I, when Brobots came out, that was the way I think that was wave six uh, point five or something. Like that's when I got into the game. And Scum caught up really quickly with aggressive release scheduling, and they're still getting more ships. But we will definitely see more as more first order and resistance stuff comes out. Uh, I mean, if they're gonna make more movies, they could just try making more ships, so we have more ships to put into this game would be nice. I would have loved to have seen the first order interceptor concept art that we saw that ended up becoming the silencer. Um, but there's, I'm sure there's stuff coming. As we saw in the new wave announcement, the shuttle from uh, Resistance is coming as well. Oh, we got some pairings. All right, here we go. Back for round one of this Toronto System Open Series. Absolutely. Ready for the action to begin. And we got a good one. Absolutely. We're start. We are going to have nothing but the best. Uh, both players we've got on the left side. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people know who. Yeah, there's very, there should be very few people who don't know who's <laughs> on the left side there. If you follow X Wing and been involved in it. Yeah, D. Yun of the Minox Squadron podcast. Yes, team. otherwise known as Stephen King's fa Stephen Kim's favorite person on the planet. Well, I mean, judging by his shirt, apparently he's defected over the PTL. Oh, we make all of them wear PTL shirts yeah. when they come up here. <laughs> However, I have to admit, D's got the sickest shoes I've ever seen right now. He's rocking. He's got black and yellow Minox looking Asics, and they're sick. Oh, I'm not a sneakerhead, so I, I don't oh, know. those are sick. Said. I got to ask oh, where yeah? you got them from. Limit. Well, I mean, what kind of <laughs> maniac would bring that in Canadian weather, though? <laughs> I know, right? I guess he just well, wasn't expecting he's that. He's probably changing them at the hotel before he comes down. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and his opponent is the always glorious, the Empire, the Emperor himself, Papa Palpatine, Aaron P., is the heart and soul of the PTL. He is one of the founding members, along with uh, um, people who don't all often get mentioned. Shouts out to VGA and shouts out to Air, uh, Michael Parise. Uh, two, two, two homies we got to pour one out for. Don't play the community anymore. But uh, And you were back there. You were around back in the day, too. You act like you weren't uh, always there. Uh, I took a sabbatical. <laughs> but Aaron, If you want to yeah. see what I've been up to, you can watch uh, all the Armada videos Absolutely. on our channel. So. But Aaron P. has <laughs> been a long-standing member. He's a pillar of our community. Uh, there's not a person in the PTL or Toronto doesn't yeah. know Aaron is. We all love him. He's taught a lot of us how to play. He's an amazing guy. He's an amazing player. And he is... He is the four ship rebel man. That is I what mean, he always we, runs. We saw we saw a uh, yeah. Don't, let's not an talk about that. example of his performance. We don't have to talk about not too that. long ago on our channel, right? We don't have to talk about that. Yeah, he positively demolished me a couple weeks ago in our top eight game. Uh, I keep joking around how I said Aaron. But I mean, Aaron usually demolishes me, and that's okay. I expected to lose as soon as I knew I was going to play him. Uh, I just didn't expect to lose that spectacularly. <laughs> I did bring the best list I had against them, and I got smushed, but that's okay. So, um, so these two lists actually, I mean, we were talking about these a few moments ago. This is just what we were speaking about. Yeah. yeah look at what D's running. Let's, I mean, let's start with D, maybe? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we talked about Drea yep. being perhaps one of the breakout uh, scum pilots. Yep. Yep. She was very meta. strong pre-points adjustment. It's just everybody was spamming uh, um, tugboats. Quad, yeah, quad jumpers. Yep. Yeah. Now, oh, now though, job. I that's mean, like with the job. with the Skurgs, uh, getting that uh, gunner, yeah, slot. Yeah, the, and that then was well, I mean, exactly that. Their their loadout before was it was tough to find their identity in the past because right. they were set up to be missile carriers, but they were a bit pricey and they would go down easily. And you know, you'd, you'd be putting like 70, 80 points into one. And I mean, Soul is really, really interesting. Soul is probably the my favorite um, Skurg. Soul Sixa. Soul Sixa, yeah, being able to drop bombs, especially. But now that you can give him. You can give him um, skilled bombardier, which right. makes him even better. So yeah, but this is a this is a very potent for sixty points. You've got huge arcs, double tapping, just a lot of firepower. A I lot mean, of firepower. We've got we've got effectively seven ships worth of firepower yeah. in in this four ship list. And let's not talk about how much hull it's got as well. <laughs> that is a ton of hull. Ten hull on yeah. each of those guys. Yeah. The lock revenants. Yeah. Drea with a hull upgrade too, so that's yeah. going to be even more. Because I mean, any any competent opponent's gonna gonna put a huge target on Drea's back here. Well, as anybody who's flown against an Imperial Swarm knows, you've got to kill Howlrunner for you to have a chance in that matchup. Yeah, this is scum uh, Howlrunner. It's, but basically. except for the fact that you've got way more hull than you would have if you're flying against um, Imperial Academies, right? Right. And, you know, this is going to be this is gonna be interesting how Aaron deploys against him because the one thing you don't want to do against this list is joust it. Absolutely no. not. Yeah. This, this, this is 100% a jousty list. It's going to... That it wants to get in your face, crunch you down, and just just make you hurt. However, so let's let's look at what Aaron's flying. So okay. he's got 
we start off with uh, best pilot in the galaxy, Wedge and Silly's Rock yep. and Crack Shot, which is a great choice. Afterburners and uh, just Servo Mortals. You can see, interesting, you can see no droid. Uh, I guess what he figures with the afterburners is not there's not really a necessary to have a specific type of droid going on there. Right. Fane, who we all saw last time he was on stream, uh, his ability can be incredibly potent if you unfortunately bring up a direct hit. Right. Uh, because as we've seen, direct hits get repaired, which means Thane can continually reveal direct hits, which is really not fun for the people who are getting revealed. Yep. Um, and then you got Arville with doing his intimidation thing, getting in there, blunking and bop. Um, Blocking and bumping. Arville. Oh, man. Arville is my my uh, my sweetheart. Pour one out. It's the green, my, the my green favorite, squadron. Who yeah, flew my the favorite Star pilot in yeah. the entire movie. Yeah. Have you seen the comics someone drew about <laughs> How do you even, you know how you life? know how like World War II fighter pilots would paint like the uh, the um, the um, silhouette of yeah. like the planes they shot down? Yeah. How, how do you, you, how do you paint a Super Star Destroyer on an A-Wing? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> how do you he's no longer that? alive to do that. So. <laughs> Uh, and then, as we were talking about again, the Blue Squadron Scout with right. Looky Looky, Leia. Leia. Tactical yeah, Officer Leia is very first. interesting, too. Tactical Officer, that's the, that's going to change the coordinate action from yep. a red to a, yep. to to a, a black white. action, yeah, right? Which yeah, makes yeah. a Le lot of sense. Leia, this is going to be the thing that basically uh, this, this system open, we're going to see how well. Yeah, this is basically how well we're going to see Rebels perform is going to be, I think, a lot on the back <laughs> of. Out to D and all the yeah. Linux faithful. He's trying to get some scouting information from us. Uh, unfortunately for him, both of us don't know what we're talking about, right? So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, but anyway, so make I think you make it, baby. I think I think the the performance of Leia this weekend, I think, is going to be a good barometer for how well the Rebels are going to perform yeah. going forward in the meta. Yeah, but so. I think again, this is an example of which where again, see, he would have rather have taken Leia than a droid. So he could have taken an any any number of two. I'm, sh I'm sure there's a the two point droid somewhere out there that he might have wanted. Yep. But it was way, way, way more worth it for him to be able to 4K. Oh, sweet, thank you. To be able to 4K for free with his two with like with both his X wings and be behind it. Now here's where Aaron's combo is incredibly interesting to me. He's got Arvil in there. If Arvil can manage to pull off that bump with his intimidation, he drops your agility by one. Then Wedge is able to fire at additional drop your agility by one. That means Andrea, or on all these things, one way or another, Aaron's gonna be firing against ships that have zero evade dice with his with his. So do, do, you, think his that, do you think that uh, Aaron's plan here is gonna drive Arvel into the middle of this formation flying here? Try to bump bump D up and uh, kind of mess with his, um, his formation a bit so that he won't be able to get all those Skurg arcs on the same target? I mean, I think so, but I think I think he's absolutely going to – he's already got it. You can see he's obviously practiced this list before. He's tucked those two Skurgs into real nice, allowing him the option to go right through that channel if he needs to. Um, he's going to keep them together as a just giant chunk of health, and you'll probably see Drea two, two, right, uh, hard to right in behind that. You're going to have to go through three locks to get to her. Yep. Um, yeah, so I think, I mean, it, it could be great. You know, if Arvel is able to br bump that one of those front Skurgs, he'll steal actions from the rest of them, reduce it down. Yeah. Whoops. Depth Revive thinking that uh, almost too cheap to not to take now. For Leia, after her points drop, that's exactly what I was saying earlier. I, th I do believe she's an auto-included if you Yeah, it's like like you said, right? Auto-included. I mean, at two points, at two points, if you have a crew carrier in your list, I would, I'd sacrifice a, a decent amount of stuff to get her in there because there is never a situation in which her ability is not going to be useful in-game. Meanwhile, Aaron did do a uh, stop actually with the U wing yep. as his first move. Yep. Well, I think I think both these two players are going to be not not cagey, but they're definitely not going to be overzealous in their openings. Um, they don't want to rush into each other. They want each want to see where other players are going to end well, up. Well, pl plus a, a U wing is not going to arc dodge three skirts. No, absolutely. So not. you want to? I mean, especially if you're banking on Leia to to do a bunch of work this game. Absolutely. Well, I think you want to delay the engagement as long I think as possible. The, I think the real party piece in Aaron's list is going to be the tactical officer. The coordinating U wing is huge. Being able to coordinate a double action onto onto other ships is going to be personally like, getting more actions onto those X wings is going to be integral to helping out and getting his list. I, it looks like he's going to want to take his X wings and flank. Yeah, so you're thinking come up this way, perhaps? Yeah. yeah. So PJ Broughton saying that Wedge and Arvel's abilities don't hurt uh, the lock too much. They're only one agility anyways. They're not expecting that all the evades. That's true. Uh, but however, if, you, uh, you know, if you've ever flown one ship of agility ships, every evade you get on them is a free 
you know, hull upgrade essentially, that you're not taking damage. So in Wedge's ability, I love it. It's always good. And it's always good to be able to just take and just put extra damage in. Yeah, Death Revive 1991, that's the exact same concept I was just saying. That it's, I, I understand where you're coming from. It's not a high agility ship. It's not like it's a Soonerfell who lives and dies on his evade dice. Um, but it still is an extra damage through, and that's the whole thing. You know, low agility ships survive off of the fact that they have high hull, and every single time they roll an evade, they're laughing and they're loving that. But when they have no option to roll, it's going to hurt. Hopefully, and I think that's probably what Aaron's going to be banking on. Now, D's, D set himself up in a great situation still. Now, he can decide to turn to chase down and, and face Aaron's. Yep. So, like, if he this, wants to, he absolutely or he can, can continue down absolutely. this way. Absolutely. He right? could probably, he, I mean, he's, one thing he's not going to want to do is split because it's a swarm. He's going to want to. Now, it's. It's feeling like this might be the path of least resistance for him to Aaron's mm -hmm. forces. This is a lot of effort that might not be worth it for him. But, I mean, he's a great player. He's an accomplished player. He, he's, he knows more than what we do about his battle plan. I think we'll see that evolve over the course of a few rounds. It's, it's one more round of slow rolling. Now, both, both these lists are slow rollable. They, they, they can go slow whenever they want to, however they want to. Um, the difference is, is you know, they've got the red barrel roll on the Skurgs. Continuing to go forward with his, uh, his death ball there. Two forward this time, probably with the entire yep. uh, Skirk Swarm. So I think you'll see them all stay together. He might go one forward to give himself some space. Not bumping if he doesn't have to. Yeah, that makes the most yeah, sense. Yeah, called it. This is the one I haven't gotten a chance to experience the medium bases as much as I would like. Uh, they're, they are tricky. They're interesting to see the way your old you know, judging of, of eyes and positioning of where stuff would go it has changed a lot. But this is just really solid formation flying. Yeah. Staggering the release of everybody. D's trying to set it up so that Arville can't block all of them at once. I think he's giving himself lots of options with the way he's setting up his ships. He can three bank, one bank. He can, you know, one forward, three forward. He's got some barrel roll options still. He could take that yellow one, move it forward, barrel roll it to self bump number three. Like, it's a really good, really good setup and a lot of uh, choice there for him. Okay, meanwhile, uh, Aaron pushing Arville out first. We'll see if he uh, barrel rolls off to the side. Looks like that's what he's going to do. Fury in A, who's commentating with me, none other than the man that puts the red five in VTTV Live, Victor. I was working on that <laughs> well, one. Well, I'm the I'm, I'm X Wings Armada expert. So if you've got any Armada <laughs> questions, be sure to be sure to let me know. Well, I can I'm answer this right away on the second I'm X Wings screen. nothing expert, so don't ask me <laughs> nothing. And I believe somebody had asked earlier about uh, lists. Yeah, there's a really healthy um, variety of lists, but Rebels are currently the most represented list at the Open today. Followed by Imperial, then Scum, then Resistance, then First Order. Armada apparently is the game that all the Canadians always win. Well, we are the best. Apparently I mean, you guys are. We've got a, we've got a world champion. Yeah. Uh, Norm. Yeah. And you got a multi-regionals, nationals. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, what's Armada? Apparently... <laughs> when FFG has completely forgot what Armada is, too. When does the Superstar Destroyer come out? That'll get me into the game. Uh, sometime in the next decade, perhaps. So it's looking like it's looking like uh, Aaron is spreading the stuff out, being able to, he's going to want to flank. He obviously doesn't want to face directly at those Skurgs because he doesn't want to face the double tapping on all of them. Right. It, it obviously, it looks like he wants to come in from the side, fly in there. Yeah, that boost makes sense to me. He'll probably hard two or hard three with Wedge next round, so you can get that in there. Uh, T4 Viral, very quickly, if you want to start to uh, uh, get into Armada, you, you can just pick one faction. Uh, it's kind of like the way X-Wing is now. You can say, I'm going to choose to play Rebel or Imperial. If you're going to play Imperial, just get a Star Destroyer and um, uh, Imperial Squadron 2-pack and I think a Gladiator. And it, really, that's all you need to get have a decent base to build um, most competitive Imperial lists. So this is going to be an interesting turn to see where the, how this is going to work out next. What does D decide to do? Does he try to go fast and try to like wipe that U-wing off the board right away? Um, or does he try to slow roll and force Aaron to come into his field of fire? Like he can decide. It's almost, it's up to, the execution is now up to Aaron to decide how this engagement plays out. I, th I think the, uh, the least slippery target is going to be the U-wing. That's the first thing you go after for for sure. I agree as well. That's the one that can coordinate. That's the one that's carrying the Leia. And uh, I mean, then you can turn around and bring all your ships to bear on on yep. the X-wings after the fact. I mean, the the A-wing is going to be bait, right? It's it's the most expendable element in. Uh Absolutely, list, so. absolutely. So he might even think about maybe doing... The thing is, because the locks are going to move before Arvel does, it's going to be a bit difficult for Arvel to pull off any blocks. Yep. However, he still will be able to proc 
his uh, intimidation if it comes up. One forward? Yeah, so that Ewing is definitely going to, he's going to taste, he's going to taste some damage for sure. This yeah, round. this is going to be the first turn of engagement, I, I think. I would assume you're going to see Arville do a three bank. Yeah, they, he Aaron needs to get the rest of his ships into into the yeah, fight well, right Fane away. Yeah, can definitely do a four straight and be able. Oh, a three! Interesting. Oh. Interesting. He's I like that. At him. He, he needs to get that uh, dorsal turret uh, within yeah. the range too, so he can start double tapping. Absolutely. So that you can see, th there's a player who has definitely tried this list once or twice before, and that's exactly what it is. He knows for his ships to be the most effective, he's got to get him in there. And again, look at this be beautiful formation to fly wow. around that rock. Great approach. Excellent job, D. And we'll see if uh, D also correctly predicted this maneuver. Because uh, you need to get Drea into the fight, too. You need to make sure that Drea is at least at range three of any of Aaron's She's probably going to go three forward, I think, so that yeah. she's able to provide the rerolls to those two lead Skurgs, I think. I like this. I really like this maneuver. He's been able to cover essentially the entire board. So D is now firing there. Like that. Yeah. That's nasty. That was a wonderful approach. Oh, so. Arvel coming in. Yep. Well, I think I think he could probably sit there and just focus because I don't think if I'm, I think Aaron's probably gonna assume if I'm D, I'm gonna fire at Leia. He's not gonna take that shot at Arvel, but maybe he's gonna do something. Aaron's going. Aaron's going to be a little bit fancy, elected to fail the maneuver. Yeah. Now, now in 2.0, yep. remind me, it's. Uh, you still get to do it, right? It's, Absolutely. It's considered a maneuver, so you get Absolutely. to bump. Absolutely. So he's going to get that intimidation off. So what exactly that? So what he's able to do is he's able to use the chassis ability of the A wing, which is auto thrusters. So once you do, he can he can or it's probably a linked action, one or the other. Um, I haven't flown Rebel yet in 2.0 right. yet, so forgive me if I'm wrong. But what he basically did was he focused and he linked action into his boost, which he then failed and stopped along the path of that boost, uh, and still took the stress anyways. But he's happy to be there. It's one less shot he's not going to take now. Actually, that was a really smart move from Aaron because now that took away one of his attacks on that potential A-wing. Whether or not D was always going to fire directly into into the U-wing at all times, right. why risk it if you don't have to? And now Arvel's in a great place to cause problems for all of D's swarm next round. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> Aaron's opening of the S-foils yep. on all his X-wings, yep. getting ready to... Uh, Engage in combat yeah. here. And I think Wedge is just going to happily shoot at yeah. range three. And, and he needs to trade. He needs yeah. to get a trade. He has the potential with the intimidation. Yeah. And Arvel can shoot at the at the Skirk 2 with Absolutely. his ability. Absolutely. So he needs to make, uh, if if not, uh, delete Skirk number three. So that's exactly that. So you see Aaron's put all of his. That's that's going to be his target. He's, yeah. set, he's set up to t attack that one. So Wedge is checking range. He's just checking all of his optionals. Looks I think like that's going to be three to every every ship. I believe that'll be range three through the uh, range three unobstructed onto that one. So yep. actually, this is a situation where the intimidation plus the wedge yep. is because it would normally be two adding green one dice, right? Absolutely. Well, what happened was he would add one for the range. Yep. Wedge would take one away, and he'd still be left with one. But now with him intimidation, yep. Aaron's deciding whether or not he should focus. I think he should put yeah. two damage in. Yep. Yep. Excellent. I would probably have done the I same mean, if thing. I mean, if he's not rolling any evasion dice, this is just simply damage on the table, just right? Just straight damage down. As you can yep. see, two shields off those beautiful SOS. Uh, they sold. Yep. So Thane's definitely going to go into there as well. Ooh. Two yeah. damage. Good it's enough. range two, so it's, it's, it's guaranteed damage because of intimidation. All right. So that shields down on uh, Revenant number three. Yep. And now it's Dreya's turn to deal some punishment. I feel like now, again, so newer players, this is a tactic that actually you should realize. So what Dean and Aaron did on their choice is he's activated his ship, and he is choosing to measure all available targets right. with the activated ship, which is completely legal, and I think you should always do. It gives you information, and it helps you think through your design, what your choices are, your attack patterns. You should always take that opportunity to do that if it's not going to slow the game down too much. Now, if you obviously only have one attack option, don't measure all available options, but you know what I mean. You should take the time to get the information that you have every right to when you're playing the game. So as we thought he would go, D has yep. decided to shoot the U-Wing at range three. Got to take out that U-Wing before he yep. can proc Ooh, the layout. That's oh, lovely. nice. That's a lovely attack. And that's an <laughs> unfortunate result. Okay, so not a good start for Aaron. Looks like Aaron's deciding to roll the way that I roll when I'm on stream. 
So two shields down for the blue squadron scout. Yep. De D definitely signaling the target he's going after this turn with that. Well, I think with the two shields down, you absolutely put the yeah. rest of your list into there now. So this will probably be the uh, Arville on the blue squadron. Two more free damage. That That's fine, right? Because now... Now with both the Lock Revenant and Blue Squadron firing at PS2, he's yep. going to be able to get those shots off at the U-Wing. Yep. Just out of range one, unfortunately, yep. but that's still going to be a total of... Ooh, beautiful rolling. So that's a crit through, and crits are really nasty in 2.0. Console Con fire. Console fire, the critical. There it is, console fire. So before you engage... And that's going to proc this round because it's a PS2. So that's the thing that's nasty about crits in 2.0. I, I don't think that's that big a deal with... Uh, I mean, he's got the hull to spare, but still, yeah. if you get an extra damage in when... So D's electing to uh, activate the beautifully painted Skurg first, I believe. Let's go. So he's going to elect to put all fire into that Ewing, which makes the most sense. All right, starting with the primary weapon attack. Three yeah. dice. The Drea reroll. Yeah, got that Drea reroll. And this is this is where you're gonna see the, yeah, this is where you're gonna see the power of Drea come into uh, come into play. Yeah, and then rolling he'll definitely that hit, spend that focus. three hits there. Yeah. And oh, unfortunately, man. this is I I feel like having a game like this uh, where you, right away you're just not rolling any paint whatsoever. It really can you got you got with your mind. Yeah, that's yeah, what happens. Yeah, that's what I mean, sometimes. it can really set the tone of a day if you. If you let it get to you, and yep. hopefully Aaron's going to be able to to push through this. So here's a dorsal attack, so that's two a, hits. So that is a highly accurate. And now does he spend it or hold on to it? That's his decision now. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. I mean, you could hold off for um, for two eyeballs. So Aaron's thought process there was as he was talking. He said, "There's one guy left to shoot on him at range two. So he decided he's going to spend it to minimize Yeah, I mean, a real chance of that U-Wing dying this turn. Yep. All right. Going to get a Dre reroll, perhaps? Yep. yep. There you go. Yeah, spend, so the focus. spend the focus. Two hits there. That U-Wing now tokenless. Yep, and taking and nothing again. but damage. Can to me, does this thing. remind you of any particular game? Unfortunately uh, for me, it reminds <laughs> me exactly of my last game on so stream. So now, I mean, we all love Aaron, but is this a little bit of karma? No, God, no? no, not at all. No, okay, not at all. no karma whatsoever. Yeah, with, with so many different types of attacks, you're just trying to make sure. Well, that it's just it's the a proper attack is going through. It's been four attacks so far, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Drea shot, then uh, the yellow and black yeah. skirt got two shots. Yeah, there was two. This was the primary attack that just happened, so this is going to be a dorsal turret uh, follow up. Yeah. That was three, actually. Three and two. So the players are just trying to talk through all the damage to make sure it all lines up. There's nothing nefarious going on. They're just, it's un with with so many rerolls and so many attacks yep. coming out of these ships, it's, right. it's difficult it's, to decide. So D finally not rolling nothing but hits. Uh, so Aaron finally getting out. Oh, so they're going to. Yes, they did. Forget the console fire, and they're going to roll for it now. And there we go. One more damage on that ship from the console fire. So he's... They're checking for range. So we're just getting an Allen call for a range route, right. a range call. All right, Nathan, uh, thanks for pointing that out to us. You just gotta, they just got to fix stuff. So they're just doing a judge call for a range. What they're hoping, what Aaron is hoping, is this is out of range. What D is hoping that it's still in range in range three. <laughs> D and Aaron are emphatically calling for a judge so they can check their this one. So what they've got to do is they've got to pull out that skurg, and I think they're trying to see if it's clear of the rock. We're both, everybody at the table has confirmed that this is range three. Right now the call is, is it? Obstructed, obstructed or not obstructed. So a range three obstruction would be great for Aaron because then it'd be three v three. He's hoping to he's hoping to God he can get his his um arc, his um Ewing through this battle. It looks like it is obstructed. Yeah. Actually no it's not. He's rolling three dice yeah. only, yeah. So unfortunately with the Drea, the focus that's oh, no. most likely a dead U Wing. No. So and <laughs> blanks again. That's a cursed dice. Cursed yeah. dice. Well, that was an excessive amount of damage. 
but that's what you get yeah, when you get I, re-rolls, I, double taps, and you have focuses. I gotta say, I feel like I feel like D almost honey potted Aaron there. What do you mean? Kind of getting him to. I, I I don't know if it was at all possible for Aaron to arc dodge in the initial joust, but it, it looked like no, Aaron there was nowhere accepted that, D's challenge to take the joust here. There was almost nowhere that Ewing could go. Right. Uh, and Aaron desperately needs to get one of these Kurgs off the table, and the Ewing has three attack dice. Yeah. So this is the follow-up Dursator shot wow. on Arvel. And that's no still pace. managing to get damage through. He has not rolled a single evade yet. He's literally rolling what I rolled in our first match, where I rolled one paint on nine yeah. dice. He's rolling worse than I did. So, so pretty brutal first turn for Aaron. Uh, wasn't able to take that Lock Revenant out. But now the interesting thing is th the Joust is pretty much over, I would guess. I don't know. I mean, now we got to figure out what, what D's going to do to get these guys around. Well, the problem not is... Not run into each other. The problem is, is that would have been a great turn for Leia to be alive. Yeah. Because then his Arvel could have slooped. Right. Because it would have been a white sloop. And he would have been allowed to do that while stressed. Now he can't do much of anything. I think if I'm D, I well, can one forward well, and smear one of the X-Wings. Well, one of the things Arvel could do is potentially try to jump in there. Jump the gap and, and block, block Drea. Yeah. But all you do is remove one of her evades. And now the worst part is, is Aaron's going to have to waste uh, a highly valuable, valuable X-Wing shot to kill one of those locks that only has one life. He really wanted to come out of that exchange one Skurg down. That's going to be tough for him. Losing that at Y with Ewing was tough. That's real tough. So Turd Hats, Turd Hats is talking about how we can't wait to see the uproar because trips up, Triple Ups Lungs is a puppy compared to all the double tapping going on. Um, yeah, I mean, it's rough. It's a brutal list. It really is. It's a high health, insane amount of fight shoots. You know, it's like the old Y Wings with TLT quad tapping, eight tapping. It's, it's nasty. The problem is, is that, well, that's not the problem, but that's the situation in challenging a competitive game. You want to give a ship something that makes it competitively viable, but then does that make it too competitively viable? This is the point that I was talking to you about that we'll bring up later, that my point, uh, there's ways of fixing this without having to completely nerf good ships' abilities. Injured lock to bump an X-Wing and smash it with the other three. PJ Broughton, that's a great idea. So PJ Broughton says if he was D, he tried to use the injured lock to bump an X-Wing and then smash it with the other three. That's an excellent plan. Um, it's, not, it's not stressed. It can go, what, two forward and fill the space where Thane would be, and then the rest of his list could just smear Thane and bump him. Um, or he could... Or he could... I think it has a hard two, but that would probably put it on the rock. So that might not be an option, too. However, he could do a two forward and then maybe a barrel roll back and try to block Wedge's lane. I don't know if that fits. So one forward, barrel roll here. That probably doesn't do much damage to Wedge. doesn't really get in his way. Um, if he's going for a maximum blockage, it might make sense for it to go there. So we're just trying to get the clock back up and running. Give us, bear with us in a moment. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's just gonna be a moment. So I think this is where it's tough, though. I think the the X wings want to do their one forward special and and get that those range ones, but um, but then they're gonna take a lot of double tapping. And this that's exactly a... where where PJ Broughton had called. He's good. He's gonna be able to if he barrel rolls, he'll be able to block that forward. Yeah, so this is probably gonna. You're, you're assuming he's gonna try to do a red barrel roll this way, right? Yeah, I think so to block to block Thane, and then the rest of his list can absolutely smear Thane. Yep. Oh no, he's just gonna just just gonna chill and keep him alive. Oh, he cleared console fire. He used his action to clear console fire. I guess he figured Thane's gonna have to fly past him, so he'll still be alive. That's not a bad call out either. And then Drea will probably be coming up. So it's now it's whether or not Arvel can block Drea. How do you think Thane gets out of this? Uh, he doesn't. That's the thing. <laughs> uh, he could hard three and then boost. Yeah, could he, could he close his foils here? So just we want to call back there. D being flying. So it's supposed to be a two turn. But I think uh, his, either his dial slipped or something else happened there. I think that was supposed to be a two turn barrel roll back to block Drea. Is my assumption. 
Turd Hats, those lists, those lists that you all mentioned are lists I believe we are seeing a lot of out on the floor. There's a ton of whys everywhere. The Y-Wings are probably going to be the MVP of this SOS, I think. Yeah, but I mean, I, they were I, supposed to be all-purpose ships anyways. They were supposed to be adaptable. Give them a turret, give them, the, give them a bomb. They were workhorses for the fleets. Um, and we're just seeing them come into their own. So yeah, I'm almost positive that what happened there was Aaron's dial slipped. It was supposed to be a two-turn, which would have been blue in Arville. The barrel roll black, back would have blocked Drea, right. given her not an action. Hopefully kept it out of range of one of those Skurgs so she couldn't use her ability. But um, there we go. Ooh, well, I mean, if, if he does make this turn, which I don't think he does. No, he doesn't. No. Well, I mean, the, the good news is uh, he's not going to get sh He's only going to get shot at. Well, good is relative, but he's going to get shot Two at shots. only by the one Skurg and Drea. Uh, yeah, so but, it's, it's, but it's range one from the Skurge and the Skurg and then range one from the Dorsal. So it's four dice and three dice, which is actually pretty stupid. Here's Wedge, though. I wonder if, uh, I mean, he's not going to be able to kill Drea this turn with nope. both Wedge and, and Thane. No. Uh, this is also why it would have been great for, you know, if Aaron's U-Wing had survived. He might have been able to hard to her out of the the hard to the U-wing out of the way, coordinate a focus on uh, Thane when he realized he was going to get blocked, and it would have been a much different story. Like that, it, it hurt. Plus, also, it might not have been, you know, it might have been a different board state because he would have had his own medium base blocking some of the stuff. Yeah. So Aaron really doesn't have much of a choice, but he's going to try to take out. Well, not take out, but yeah. uh, <laughs> after doing a after D bumping the ship a bit, he's going to try to take a yeah. shot on Drea. Mm. That's unfortunate for Aaron. Nah. So D, D will take the one because uh, it was a range two and um, no, pose yeah, no defense dice there. Wedge's ability. So here's Stain range one. Hopefully some might. Nope. Just so Aaron's dice have decided yeah, he does not get to win today. And yeah, rubbing salt in the wound there. So there's the thing with that one evade die, right? Getting off a four dice attack and then. At least uh, Aaron decided to use crack shot to get that one damage through. Yeah, because he's he's not sure if that ship's going to stick around. Might no, well. I would. Well, you absolutely use crack shot. Absolute yep. chance you get. Never hold on to your crack shot. Use it as soon as you can. Uh, so I think if Aaron could roll like D, he'd be in a much better situation this game. But um, hey, he evaded something for a change. Thane takes two. So that shields down. But now here's the big gun. Here comes the pain. So starting with four dice attack. Yep. Now it is unmodified as far as focuses go. Well, you still have Drea yeah. rerolls. Doesn't really matter when you have the Drea reroll. Wow. Yeah. You could just you know never miss. Have That's you, an option. Now I, I want to take this this uh, time to point out. You yep. notice that whenever D rolls dice, yep. he'll remove the dice, yep. put it into the tin, and he'll roll a fresh die. Yep. You think that's like a superstition thing? Yeah, or? I think he's, he's punishing a die that didn't <laughs> give him a hit. I mean, it's freaking working. He's, he's rolled nothing but damage this whole game. So maybe uh, secret, I'm going to start damaging yeah, him and start punishing my dice when they dice me. tips, but dice tech. So here's that dorsal turret follow-up shot. Veteran turret gunner re-rolling yep. with Drea. Two For hits. Yet, two hits, and that'll probably be a dead thing. And that's a yeah. dead thing because one was enough to kill him. The, the joust is real. The jousting power of this list is real. You know, being being able to, uh, that Lock Revenant surviving, he pushed it forward so that none not of the uh, ships got a... Not rolling a single evade on his U-Wing. Wait, well, he's not rolled a single evade. He's rolled two evades the whole game, so. Braza RG saying that D's complaining about dice on the COD podcast has probably fixed it. I don't know, because I complain about my dice all the time. It never fixes it for me. I think it's confirmation bias, so I'm sure. So what I'm thinking here yeah. is, are we about to see a bunch of Talon rolls like that, perhaps? Hmm. I'm not so, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Because again, I don't have a lot of experience with this list. The medium bases, they're kind of all clunked up. He might just try to bring them all like back out here and then do it the turn later. I mean, he's got nothing but time. He's very, very, very clearly yeah, winning right. this I game. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it looks like this. Right? It, probably it's best to just disengage, turn around, and then come back as one uh, one unified front. Yeah. 
catch uh, catch either wedge or yeah, like he might just you know three four and then one bank that one and then two three four that one and then bring Dre here and then flip them all next round. I don't know. I don't have any experience with this list. It's not my kind of list, so I don't really know how they fly. But that's it. PJ brought him with a great tip. <laughs> Doesn't guarantee better results, but makes you feel better. Got a pay raise. That's a great tip. First thing he did was buy some regionals. And then whenever they're bad, he's reminded, well, at least I have regionals. That's great. You know what? I've got, I have regionals too, and they always roll terribly. Well, I, mean, I paid the iron price for them by, by, <laughs> by earning them, but they never do good for me ever, ever. Well, let me tell you guys a tip. If you play Armada, you don't have to roll evasion <laughs> dice at all. <laughs> Uh, F. Pironix, like say, I'm glad I'm not homeless. Well, let's, you know, it's important to care about the little things in life. So, yeah, so, um, I mean, Aaron's probably going to maybe either hard one or sloop Arville to get him back in the fight. Does he fly wedge away to see what happens? Does he hard two him? Just try to take that damage Skurg off the board to preserve MOV. I think, I think obviously, Drea was always a target, but not being able to alpha that one Skurg was a bit of a problem because it's still a ship that's out there with a potential thing. Now, don't forget, you know, if he wanted to, D could just rotate all of his arcs backwards. He, they're not stuck in the forward arc. Yeah, I mean, like, if it, if it gets to the point where... He could just one forward all of them and rotate all of his arcs backward and then fire all of his dorsals backwards on the wedge who's got to come in. So Aaron's got to think about bailing on wedge instead of chasing. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of Skirk Tetris going on here. He's going to have to figure out how to, to, uh, to get everything turned around. Yeah. I mean, there's also the whole point that he could just turn everybody out this way and come back around the long way around. Right. Like Again, there's 42 minutes left in the round. D is very handily winning the match currently, and not, not anything negative against Aaron. It's just the yeah, way that I, original first two rounds rolled out. Like, this I, is D's game to lose, so he has I no also rush. Think, I also think there's something to be said about preserving your mental energy, too. Yeah, absolutely. Not thinking too hard about, especially when you have an advantage like you do now, right? Yeah. Not thinking too hard about your maneuvers. Yeah. Instead, taking the safe, conservative route, especially with so much time remaining on the clock. Yeah. Um, also, D's electing the talent roll. Yep. You know, that's that's another thing about medium bases that I always... Uh, I'm not too sure of where the, the template ends up when you're doing the so barrel rolls. So, we just right? saw it right there. When you do the barrel roll yeah. thing, it ends... The back of the template ends right at the line of the... Of, on there. Yeah, it's either the back or the front of the template ends on the line. Or, or you just don't move the thing at all, right? So. Yeah. Is this a talent roll over a rock? It is. Ooh. I like that. He's looking for bumps. Yeah. He's getting them all back playing in the same direction. And I think, I think I mean, that, he's got the hole that's that, there. That probably means that this guy potentially is going to be doing a talent roll way, this and way. Then, yeah. yeah. That's another thing. I mean, despite the medium bases, they're actually really good knife fighters. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, one of the other lists we talked about was the the five Y wings. Hey, these these dice continuing to roll consistently perfect. So that works <laughs> for better or for worse. For better or for worse, for sick or poor, you can't you can't curse them when they do the when they're consistent. Yeah, the the one thing about the five Y wing list with the veteran Turk Hunter, I mean, they do have a one extra ship, but. Um, when it gets into a fur ball, it, they're not e as easy to reposition as like a skirt, even with a medium base, being able to do talon rolls like this uh, yeah. to get you know to get yourself back into the fight. Whereas you know in 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 a five Y wing list, you'd have to take a turn to do a four K, maybe bring yourself out of engagement range and then come back in. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Speaking of four Ks, here's Drea with the four K. Yep. They just elected to do that at a turn. Yep. It'd just be easier because these. Skirk was already out of yeah. the way. I mean, you also need to make sure that Dre has got Ark on uh, on Arvel and Wedge, too, to get that reroll. Well, Arvel should have moved first, but I guess at the table they've electing to allow Dre to move first. Well, maybe they just forgot. It, it does give him extra information. Yeah. And we got we got a judge on the table, so yep. everything's okay. But this gives, that, but this gives uh, Aaron a bit more extra information. I mean, he's probably still going to have to focus push for a boost, I think. Um, yeah, okay, that's exactly what I would have thought. And then he's got to get Dre off the table, which won't be able to do on this turn. So what I'm assuming is that D was expecting Wedge was going to maybe run. So if Wedge did a hard two, okay. Talon roll. All right, so no shots for, for Wedge doesn't look like. But uh, he may have actually dodged 
He may have actually dodged all those arcs. It looks like he did. Yeah, so yeah. Wedge won't be getting shot at all this round. And um, So that, that's actually pretty prescient by, uh, by Aaron. I mean, I, it actually does look like maybe that uh, guy was... Okay, well, here's oh, the he's going to use afterburners to try to right. finish off that Skurg. Beautiful well, not maneuver. only that, but like it was... It was sketchy whether or not this actually had yep. an arc, but now he's yep. out of the arc. Dodge the arcs, gets the shot. You know, it potentially setting up himself up for an attack run here as well, but right? he did get it. He's got he range did three. Get it. Oh, yeah. So all he needs is not garbage dice. That's not okay, garbage. Okay, two hits. Actually, that That's kills him, right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Picking his targets. Okay. The comeback kid, potentially. Maybe. Well, if Arvel can at least put some damage into Drea, now Wedge is in a beautiful situation to be behind the Skurgs yeah. and come challenge and, Drea. And they've already done their Talon roll, so it's going to take them a turn to yes. uh, to de-stress. Yes, so that was a pretty inspired Talon roll by Aaron, I have to admit. That was beautiful. Yeah, no shots. Looks like Drea is going to get a shot on Arvel here. Yep. Two hits, hot fire dice. Yeah. So what, he needs some actual evades for a change. He's going to hold it. Oh, he's going to spend yep. it. Okay, got to so spend it. you, you got to keep, keep your survivability alive. up. Yeah. That makes sense. So, so now the work begins. I mean, you've started your work on Drea. Yeah. Now I think uh, <clears throat> it's quite possible. Oh. oh, there's that one evade die doing what it's the worst feeling when you would take away that one <laughs> it is, damage. It is the worst feeling when it's opponent. one evade die. Yeah. If it's three evasion dice, yeah. you don't feel bad even if no. they roll triple you evades. Them to it's evade. the one evade it's die. It's something about that. It's the mental... Yeah punishment you put your opponent under mm -hmm. by consistently rolling one evade on your one evade die. It's it's dice demoralizing. <laughs> so now with the uh, the two Skurgs out of action for another turn, uh, I really feel like Aaron's just going to try to capitalize on oh, absolutely. taking out Drea here. Absolutely. I mean, it's... He has to. It's still, what, six... I mean, with the hull upgrade, it's actually seven hull remaining on Drea. We don't have that. Uh, the we don't hull have upgrade that in there. So there, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. yeah. Would have been nice to have gotten that hull upgrade off with that one evade. And this oh, is that's really a good point. We completely forgot to talk about Death Rain's blog. It, the freaking Skurg has reinforced. <laughs> I'm glad it can double tap, get reroll some other. Sh okay, yeah. So maybe this is a maybe this is a terrible. <laughs> this is a really rad, problematic list. It's, it's potent, I'll say that. It's challenging and potent. I don't know, um, what do you think, uh, what do you think like, uh, Phantom's chances are against a list like this? Oh, I'm not good at math, Wingy, but I'm, a, I'm more of like a passion player. This this seems way nastier. Yeah? I mean, the, fa I, th the Phantoms This is the ultimate first. jouster list, right? The, the Phantoms will shoot first. Yeah. They'll get all four. Any, if you ever evade, they'll juke you down, so you're going to take the damage from them. However, they can't afford to spend a focus. So they get whatever dice they get on the dial. They average two hits each. You get eight damage through. They cannot one-shot your lock. And then you take one off the board. Then the next round, the problem is, is that the Phantoms are super, or not problem, Phantoms are super maneuverable, and they would be able to like, you know, get around them, whereas the locks, once they've jousted, have to turn around. Yep. That's always the challenge with lists like this that are slow and harder to turn around. And um, Sia is... C3 ILB, thanks for thanks for checking that. Yeah, Arvild is down one shield. We've got that sorted out. Oh, at yeah, the Onyx yeah, thing, it does sure not they have don't. I think they have, have focus, okay. target lock, and uh, reload. barrel roll. Barrel roll, and then yeah. reload from the veteran turn gunner. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. That's good. It's, it's, it's not insane, insane. I so like this move. He's, uh, he's uh, putting his guns on Arvil with this maneuver. Yep. However, he is allowing, he is leaving his flank open to Wedge to come in and harass. Yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing you can do about Wedge this turn, right? But you can do what, you can you can try to do your best effort to take out Arvel. I mean, Arvel. Well, I also think D just wants to make sure he knows that Aaron's target is going to be Drea. So he's yep. going to point all of his guns where Drea is to keep Drea safe. Mm -hmm. Which, why wouldn't he? That's, that's, I mean, it doesn't. It's not the linchpin to his list, but it's certainly where a lot of its power comes from. The list will still be absolutely nasty if you couldn't re-roll, but it's extra nasty when you can. Ooh, soft one. Soft uh, one. That does look like a bump and sticks where it is. It's yeah. going to be a funky one. If it's not... Oh, he might actually, he might actually make that. 
That's a bump, okay? That was a beautiful self-bump ID there. Clears his stress. Actually, that's good. The, that, that, was a, that sets him up for a talent roll again yep. next turn yep. facing that was that was a, That was cute. That was a really nice move. So here's Arvel bumping into the Skurg. Yep. Getting that intimidation off. I don't think D minds all that much, but nope. that is going to actually set up a set up a range one shot from the Skurg onto Drea. Yep. And Drea's gonna bump probably. Yep. So right here, Aaron hopes that Drea bumps. No, Drea's gonna bump the Skurg, which means she'll get the range one on Arvel as well. I gotta say, D, that was a really nice move. Well done. That was very well executed. All right, let's see what Wedge is going to do here. Right now, Aaron's deciding whether or not to open or to close his S-foils. But he's going to do it with the oil foils closed. Should be a two bank. And then that'll be a focus, I would assume, to get a shot on Andrea, take away the whatever she would get from the rock for his ability. Yeah, so a to tokenless wedge, this will be pretty rough for him with the... All right, range through, through a rock. Yep. And... Spend it, absolutely. Uh, lukewarm attack. Well, oh, then, <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's... It, uh, yeah. Dre's got some skills, some evasion skills. An excellent option is just to never just roll not evades. It yeah. helps. So here's here's Dre's attack on Arvel. Yeah. Oh, finally okay. a miss. A little bit of a break. Yeah, a little bit of a reprieve. I tell the Skurg decides to fire. Uh, so Arvel will take the yeah. range one. Piling on Dre here. And just average dice for Aaron. Yeah. So that, that hit will go through. Finally. Finally not evade. rolling an evade on Dre. And here's, here's the big shot. Yeah. Four dice, primary weapon attack. Oh, oh, there you go. Okay. There you go. At <laughs> Gives least Aaron the high five. At least his dice are consistent. Yeah. <laughs> At least his dice are consistent. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the one reroll from, from Drea. Wow. Okay. And Aaron flying casual, to reminding D he still had a Drea reroll, even though it could technically have passed. Uh, and that's a much different result from the dorsal turret. Okay. Going to get the... Oh, nope. That was two hits, I think. Yep. yep. Those evade, on those evade icons are not showing up for Aaron today. Nope. Unfortunately. So oh, Arvo's sitting on one. So Dre is still sitting on one, two, three, four, five health still because of the hull upgrade. This is tough. So I feel like uh, number four might do a soft one this way. Bump and stay Pot in place? Yeah, something like that. Uh, potentially... You know, maybe even. Well, yeah, he, he could he could move uh, this uh, number but two first, do a talon roll, maybe like that. I think. Yeah, no, I think you wouldn't. absolutely three talon. You would do a three talon, which would be like something like. No, a th no, yeah. that's not actually all that. I don't know how good that is for D. I wonder if a three talon this way would put him on a rock, or would it? Would it clear this guy? I don't have enough experience with the big yeah. bases, but that actually could be a really, if, really if, if that maneuver move. is possible, he can get Arvel and Arc again and potentially Wedge. Yeah. Then what you do is you do a soft one like that, bump into Drea, and then you've got this arc covered. Yeah. Drea then jets up here, maybe turns her uh, her turret to the rear. PJ brought in uh, Wedge will definitely have an incredibly difficult time taking down two full health locks solo. You are 100% correct. But as CL, but C3LB points out, he could definitely get half points on one, if not both. Um, especially if he can get Dre off the board to take down some of their reliability or their consistency. Well, get, actually, getting half points on both uh, Skurgs would put Aaron in the lead, as long as he doesn't I don't think lose he will, anything though. else. I don't think he will. Those Skurgs, double tapping, it's just... It's just a probability, right? Like three dice, two dice, three dice, two dice. That's you know, that's ten dice around against a two of a dice X wing. There's, that's not good. That's not good at all. Without Arville there to bump to to reduce them and all that stuff, all this stuff. I mean, he doesn't need Arville anymore to reduce anybody because Wedge reduces them anyway. So at this point, 
Arvel is just there to hopefully get range one shots out of Archon, which he's unfortunately had a hard time getting in because he keeps well, these big these medium bases are doing great at, at bumping. So some people are thinking that potentially we might see this this Skurg do the challenge and then Dre a 4K and then mm -hmm. this guy do that, and then everybody's pointing in the one relativistic direction. That's not a bad option as well. I mean, the most obvious for Wedge here is the two turn in to heat somebody. Yep. Super Sniper Boy's <laughs> asking for Dion to get on stream. Yeah, uh, actually, Dion's expressed interest in actually coming on stream as a potential commentator on day two if he oh, doesn't yeah, make hell it. Oh, yeah, we'd love to get but him on we, stream. We want to wait for the uh, maybe later in the later in the tournament to get Dion on. Get yeah, we want to get, you know, we, belt, there's, yeah. there's, there's people who've traveled from all around. There's some people who we'd love to get on stream. Obviously, we would love to show and get some other people on stream. Here we are. We're showing some love to some some big names. And it's like, I mean, it's been a, a great match. The first round made it seem like it was a much different game. Air, let's let's not forget and let's not forget to give some praise to Aaron to claw his way back into this match. 122 to 75 is, is still close. Yep. I know the board state doesn't necessarily show that, but that's still a good match. We still have 30 minutes left. The game is not over by any stretch. Um, Dion did pull off an incredible block last game. Arvel survived with one damage. One damage. He got lucky there. So he does fit the three yeah, talent that, roll that way. That's that, that talent roll we talked about. So Drea will almost assuredly 4K then, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think they're, we're going to see a soft one by number four, followed by that 4K. Interesting. D does need to give him enough space to do a soft one out of that uh, thing next turn. So he's going to go back. CL3B, kudos to Aaron. You would have tilted by now. You and me both, brother. I would have tilted on round one. But that's why uh, I'm commentating. And Aaron's a bit of a tables. Zen master, though. I never really see him get super upset when... Uh, the dice don't He's go incredibly way, so. good at keeping his salt internal. Arvel doing a hard three, I think, looks like. Uh, no, it looks like something's happening with the other. I wonder why they're. Hmm. I'm not sure what's happening. Too many arms and not enough info. Mars Mike Beard. If Arvel's doing the hard three, he's looking to block the 4K from Drea. It's a good call. Oh my god. So many moving ships. What's happening? <laughs> it's like keeping no us idea. in suspense. What's going on? I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Somebody's moving. I mean, the Skurg hadn't moved yet unless we missed it. Okay. The well, now now I'm not even sure what move that was. I don't know either. Who's moved? Who's, who has moved? That was Arville's move. I'm going to assume that was like a one straight by the Skurg and then followed by a three hard by Arville. That didn't clear. Yeah, and now here's that 4K we talked about. Yeah. Uh, Arvel once again in the kill box, but you never know. Aaron might uh, present uh, Wedge as a target. Depends on what the move was. Another talent roll. Oh, that's roll. interesting. Okay. And mm. then he's still got afterburners. Right, to get that boost. To get back into that lane. So he's constantly staying behind. He's trying to constantly stay behind. But that's going uh, to be Aaron's last afterburner on Wedge, Correct. I think. It is. But he's, he's doing everything he can to stay in this game, though. And he's just not sacrificing Wedge. Why would he do the hard two? Of course. He would be sacrificing his Wedge. This is another really great maneuver. And now he's sort of in behind the Skurgs again. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get Arc Andrea, unfortunately. Oh, maybe he does? Uh, no, I think he's only got the Skurg. Some of the guys in the chat are talking about the, uh, the point disparity. It might be... Just some uh, importing issues. I mean, uh, it the stuff is is accurate on the table, so we'll try to get that fixed by the next round. All the point Two values. Two shields off the other lock. So it's down to one shield. Dre will probably say goodbye to Arville. So they're just gonna proxy out the Skurg to get a proper. The, uh, the white-red token is the S-foil indicator to indicate whether it's open or closed. So that's going to be range one. They may, as you can see, the judge pulling out that middle ship to measure pro properly. Uh, I believe, if you don't understand why that's a good idea, you should go over to Gold Squadron Podcast and watch their tips video on why you should be doing that. Because when you don't remove the ship, you're actually losing a little bit of range. So that's yeah. absolutely the way you want to measure stuff. 
and mm. par for the course. Aaron, you are not allowed to roll evades, so bye bye Arville. Bad news. Yeah. So that PS kill is going to hurt him. He could have gotten extra damage into a Skurg if he was able to do that. And now, uh, now D is free to shoot at uh, shoot at Wedge with, with number the two. Yeah. And I think that's a range two. It was a range two shot, right? Yeah. yeah. And Wedge is unmodded. Uh, he would have loved to have been able to shoot with Arville before he died. And continuing Ugh. to roll nothing but attack damages. Um, yeah, I think Aaron, you have every right to blame this one on the dice. It's been a tough one. However. Man, has D set up some beautiful maneuvers. Uh, he's had his ships pointing in the right direction at all times. He's set up some incredible blocks. He's managed to consistently maintain arcs. Um, he's, he's, you could tell he's definitely got some practice with this list. I mean, if, if I was a superstitious person, I feel like Aaron's gotten all his bad luck out of the way. So now he can just focus on... Yeah, I'm going 5-0 <laughs> oh, from here yeah, on exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. You should hope so. <laughs> um... There we go. Oh. Just one. One's enough. So Wedge has definitely got some damage into him, though, from that last attack. We'll have to get the updates on that to make sure we're on there. Um, there is this D, D resetting his dice now? Yep, because of his superstitions. <laughs> he you know spent what? them all, and now he's re refreshing them. Nothing wrong with having your rituals. It's okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to update it in a second. Uh, Travis has just gone to the table to, to confirm board state. We'll be updating Wedge's shield count in a second. He definitely lost in that exchange. He The lock rolled three, and I think he only rolled one evade. So do you think uh, a hard two here, keeping the stress and blocking Wedge, uh, and then maybe some kind of Talon roll facing this way uh, is in order? The problem is the Talon roll doesn't do that. It faces this way. So I think Wedge just bails out this way. I think he comes back later. There's no reason for Wedge to go here. He goes to his death if he goes there. It, so what's the furthest next one can go in de-stress? Three forward? Uh, three forward or two bank, I believe. T4 of Viral. Can you explain these different dice? Where did he get win them? Um, those are various different types of nationals and worlds and other various prizing dices. Uh, D's been in the community for quite a long time. He's a very proficient player, and I'm assuming... He's paid the iron price for all of them by being a badass player and winning them. There's some worlds in there. There's some nationals in there. There's a bunch of different worlds, right? That's worlds, I think, or is that nationals? That's definitely worlds. That's definitely worlds. There's some really nice dice in there. That's an intimidation tactic. When you sit down across your opponent, there, yeah, you're like, yeah. I got yeah, this tie, factor, I got this tie, I got this tie. I'm going to drop dice <laughs> from all the <laughs> tier challenges across yeah. the last ten, five years. Come at me, bro. Clear was regionals. Thanks for the update. I was never good enough to win them, so I didn't know. Um, marble, the marbles were, were worlds, I believe. Yeah, talon roll. See, did a talon roll there. Oh, okay. Uh, assuming Wedge doesn't bail here, he's got him in arc. And oh, he might go back. Right to the middle. Yeah, he might be looking for uh, potentially a way to. Uh, Leave his options open to perhaps oh, you called do a it, soft the hard one two. up there. Yeah. You called the hard two for the block. Yeah, it, it depends on... Because I think that hard two block prevents a three forward uh, blue. Right. Right from... Maybe? It's tough to tell from this position. Uh, I think in the chat earlier they pointed out for us the three forward is not blue on an X-Wing. Okay. So... Um, I believe his only options would be... This blocks most blue maneuvers. This blocks, all, it blocks yeah. the two banks, it blocks the two forward, it blocks the one forward. Right. Uh, this is the maximum blockability turn. If that's what you were going for, that was the right maneuver. So I think maybe if Aaron saw that coming, his only option would have been to four forward white and just hold on to the stress to get out of there. We'll see what he programmed. Yeah. One straight and just uh, bump and not take the yeah, shot. That, that kind of... I mean, that, that kind of uh, maneuver... When you're stressed, right, there's only a limited number of maneuvers in an X-Wing. Aaron would have had to have really predicted a hard two to, to realize he needed to bail there. But now as it is, he's got, I mean, this number four looks like a range two shot, I think. Yeah, that perhaps. might be in range for the dorsal. I don't know. It might be. And he looks like he's in range of Drea. So that might be tough. Yeah, range two shot with Drea, primary weapon obstructed. Uh, just one hit. Uh, nope. Oh, man. Never allowed to roll evades. So Wedge is down to three hull. There okay. we go. There we go. <laughs> D. 
Small mercies. Small mercies. Yeah. Here we go. One reroll. I there think that was is. a blank. Okay. D has officially used all of his damage for the entire event. Now he's going to roll blanks for the rest of the tournament. Poor guy wasted it all on this one match. <laughs> and then there's a reroll from the dorsal. Oh, and never mind. It's, it's, back. Yeah, it's okay. back. They're back on. Yeah. Turn them it's back a temporary on. glitch. And oh, one of eight. So Wedge sitting on two hull. PJ Bride and some other guys in the chat, you're all making valid, very valid points. We all have great days. We all have bad days. Um, don't get intimidated by someone's swag or dice. Uh, it just means that they're great players and have been playing a lot. Just because you know doesn't mean you're not a great player either. Just give it your best and have a good time. At the and end of I the day, it's plastic space ships saying pew, pew, pew. Just give it and have a great time. I think for a lot of us here in, in Canada, I mean, just the ability to have a system open in Toronto is, uh, is enough of an experience for us, you know. The, to, to get all these people from the States to come up and play play at a premier event hosted by Cascade Games. I mean, it kind of sucks that your, your first round is going the way it is, but, um, you know, there, there's a lot of events going on tomorrow, too. The, yeah. the hyperspace trial as well. I mean, it's not over. You can still go 5-1 is it. 5-1 yeah. makes tomorrow. So he still yeah, has it's, five. It's simply a record, right? That's yeah. all you need. You just got to go 5 straight now, and that's, that's all it is. I mean, this is a really interesting format, too, though. Don't forget, you can still earn your way back in with the hyperspace trials tomorrow as well. Right. Um, and then there's a bunch of pods that are firing if you're just doing that. I mean, I am overall, I'm a real big fan of the SOS. The system open series, the way they've bracketed it, it's a lot of fun to, f to play. Extended is really, really cool because it's a huge card pool. However, the one other thing you could say is that, you know, this triple skirt list is not hyperspace legal. So <laughs> there are differences in the formats. Hyperspace, I'm finding, is really in enticing to a lot of people. Um, well, I'm finding th there's out there also the a definite uh, switch in, in what the dominant factions are. I see a lot more resistance in. Well, the thing is, you got to remember, though, that with resistance, that with the only issue with hyperspace switch now is because resistance and first order are only limited to four ships. To keep things fair, they've limited all factions to only four ish ships. Right. And that helps. That helps uh, resistance a lot more, and for sure, than it helps say rebels or, or things, because the four ships that are in Imperial kind of dictate what kind of a list you're gonna fly. You're flying a Tie Swarm, or you're flying Strikers, or you're flying something with a Reaper in it, because you know that's what you're gonna fly. Um, and that's the same thing with the rebels. You're gonna fly what you're gonna fly, because X wings are in them. The eight bit deity asked how many players were at the system open today. I believe the count was 134 players for this event. Or 132, yeah. I, we have the number. It's just. The 4K from Drea. Again, I mean, he's done a phenomenal job of self bumping, blocking, stress clearing, and K turning, and just keeping that Drea role active on the ship he knows he's going to get a shot on. Uh, just really, really good played game. Yeah, Rose Squadron Ace. Uh, one of the problems with Canada, it's a geographical problem. We have the the vast majority of our population is spread yeah. on a like across a thin layer yeah. on top of the United States, right? Yeah. So it's not like if you have a reach or if you have a system open in the Midwest, you get people from all over the United States. Yeah, we literally have like ten percent of the population. Yeah, that pl plus us. travel is generally a bit more expensive in Canada too. Uh, general, it's it's yeah. exorbitantly more expensive. So a lot of the people from like Western Canada, I mean, unless they're flying, I mean, we, in, we got Kaylin here from from out from Van City, but like it's it's yeah, it is not necessarily easy for everybody to fly across yeah. the country because flying from Vancouver. To Toronto could sometimes be an upwards in excess of six hundred fifty seven hundred dollars at times, right. um, whereas you know in the states you can maybe get across the country for three four hundred bucks, and we would all do that at that price. Absolutely, death would revive. It was cheaper for D to fly here than it would be for Western Canadians to fly. Bro, here. getting a getting a plane to uh, to Minnesota mm -hmm. <clears throat> from Toronto, it's more expensive to fly there, I think, than it was to fly to Atlanta. Well, uh, Pearson's one of the highest tax airports in the world. Yeah. All right, that's the game, that's, fortunately. That is the game. So, a little bit of bad luck for Aaron, but he's definitely not out of the tournament. <clears throat> definitely uh, sowing the seeds for a redemption arc. Uh, D put on a very, very strong showing, showing the absolute... This is, the, I, that's a terrifying list. Like, I'm going to come right out and say that. I mean, we, I know people on the internet we, have been talking about it. We, we I talked about I the known. triple upsilon potentially being the boogeyman. I mean, I feel like with all the ta attention that list got, this, this thing kind of flew under the radar until now. This and now a, we're seeing This that. is an infinitely more brutal list. Yeah. It's, you know, 5, 10, 15, 
it's uh, it's it's twenty. What, what is it? Seventeen to twenty dice around. It's seventeen dice with re rolls. Uh, it's you know, multiple arcs. It's huge chunky health. It's it's nasty. It's really nasty. Um, and it's it doesn't show a lot of openings. And you know what? Again. A, a nasty list isn't necessarily an auto win if you're not a good player. G flew it expertly. It was right. really well. He put some amazing self blocks. He did really great Kate turns and talent rolls. He picked the board advantage. He basically spent the entirety of the game once he finished the opening joust here. And that was a lot of skill to do that. And that was one of the things that's a turning points in this game. He always had arcs on somebody. And he was always keeping Drea's rerolling active. He kept Drea safe. Um, it was hella unfortunate for Aaron to lose his Ewing in the first round for not one of the Skurgs. Like, he really needed that skirt gone. Um, but it was a tough one.